Coming up on 5-Minute News. GOP pushes Barrett toward court as Democrats decry sham. Biden campaign finds third virus link. Harris suspends travel. And protesters march on Nigerian parliament after army threatens to step in. It's Friday, October 16. I'm Anthony Davis. Republicans powered Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett closer to confirmation yesterday, pushing past Democratic objections and other priorities during the COVID-19 crisis in the drive to seat President Donald Trump's pick before the November 3rd election. The Senate Judiciary Committee set October 22nd for its vote to recommend Barrett's nomination to the full Senate, with a final confirmation vote expected by month's end. You don't convene a Supreme Court confirmation hearing in the middle of a pandemic when the Senate's on recess, when voting has already started in the presidential election in a majority of states, declared Senator Chris Coons. Republicans, eager to fill the seat of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, countered that Trump is well within the bounds to fill the vacancy and they have the votes to do it. Barrett's confirmation would bring the most pronounced ideological change on the court in 30 years, poised to launch a new era of court rulings on abortion, voting rights and other matters that are now open to new uncertainty. The 48-year-old Barrett was careful during two days of public testimony not to tip her views on many issues or take on the president who nominated her. Facing almost 20 hours of questions from senators, she declined to offer specifics beyond a vow to keep an open mind and take the cases as they come. Barrett refused to say whether she accepts the science of climate change, under questioning from Kamala Harris, saying she lacked the expertise to know for sure and calling it a topic too controversial to get into. Barrett framed acknowledgement of a man-made climate crisis as a matter of policy, not science, when she was pressed by the Democratic senator from California. The federal appeals court judge responded that she did think coronavirus was infectious and smoking caused cancer, but rebuffed Harris on the climate change question for seeking to solicit an opinion on a matter of public policy, especially one that is politically controversial, effectively ignoring science in the face of the ever-present climate crisis. At least three people connected to Joe Biden's presidential campaign have tested positive for coronavirus, leading the campaign to suspend in-person events for vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris through to Monday. Biden is not altering his public schedule because he had no direct exposure to the individuals who tested positive, as defined by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It's the Biden campaign's first coronavirus scare after months of safety precautions that drew mockery from Donald Trump, even after he, First Lady Melania, and their son Barron and others contracted the virus themselves. The Democratic campaign's cautious reaction underscores the differences in how the rival camps have approached the pandemic, both in terms of preferred government response and in the candidates' personal protocols. Biden's campaign announced two positive cases on Thursday morning, identifying Harris's communications director Liz Allen and an unnamed member of the flight crew for one of Harris's recent campaign trips. The campaign announced a third case in the afternoon yesterday as part of its contact tracing efforts from the first two cases. The third individual is an aviation company employee who was on Biden's plane for trips to Ohio and Florida earlier this week, but who entered the back of the plane and sat far away from Biden. Both candidates have tested negative for coronavirus multiple times since then, including yesterday. Everyone on the Biden campaign is required to wear a mask. Trump, speaking without a mask at a crowded outdoor rally in North Carolina on Thursday afternoon, offered his best wishes to Harris and reiterated his skepticism of wearing masks. Biden and Harris typically keep their masks on when speaking indoors. Both travel on planes with a small number of staff and secret service. For Harris's travel, a second plane carries the rest of the staff. For Biden, a second plane carries the travelling press corps. 
Hundreds of protesters marched to the gates of Nigeria's parliament on Thursday, hours after the army said it was ready to step in and restore order after more than a week of demonstrations against police brutality. The protest defied a ban on mass rallies in the capital, Abuja, that the government said was imposed earlier on Thursday to stop the spread of coronavirus. Chanting crowds also blocked roads and waved flags and banners in the commercial hub Lagos, where protesters reported clashing with unidentified men wielding weapons. Lagos's state governor said on Twitter that he condemned the attacks on peaceful protesters by armed and unscrupulous elements trying to cause chaos. Lagos State set up a 200 million naira compensation fund for victims of police brutality. A core demand of protesters and a presidential spokesman said on Twitter that the government had directed all governors to establish victim compensation funds. Protesters have staged daily marches since Wednesday last week, calling for an overhaul of police forces. Police had responded to the demonstrations with beatings, tear gas and gunfire which human rights group Amnesty International said had killed at least 10 people. But the police agreed on Tuesday to stop using force against protesters. In response to the protests, the head of Nigeria's police force on Sunday dissolved the special anti-robbery squad, a unit that demonstrators have accused of beatings, killings and extortion. Demonstrators have called for more meaningful reforms. Protesters say they fear a new unit, whose creation to fill the gaps left by SARS was announced on Tuesday, was just a rebranding of the squad. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Please subscribe, rate and review us at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an independent production covering politics, inequality, health and climate. Delivering unbiased, verified and truthful world news daily.